If you guys are men, if you got any ounce of manhood, listen to Tom. Trust me. Bottom line is, you're anti-marriage, pro-slut. Yeah, and, and most uh, guys are. <laughs> You said it one time, and you keep saying it. You know why divorce is so expensive? Because it's worth it. You know what? You are the best thing that has happened to women, and they should just listen to you. I started listening to you, and you kind of confirmed to me how men really are. Yeah. I should have listened to you before I got married. <laughs> a lot of people should have listened to me before they got married. You know, that's the worst thing you could do to a kid is be a single mother, religious, and raising a boy. I thought you were kind of skeptical, but now I, I listen to oh, you. Oh, I am skeptical. What's wrong with being skeptical? Well, I was skeptical on thinking that maybe this maybe this could work, and as soon as I gave it a try, took myself off the market, I ended up right where you said I would, and man, I wish I would have kept listening to you for more than just the three years that I did. These Lakers fans, they're so delusional. I call them just like the primary went on. They're, you know, they're the Hillary Clintons of the basketball. They're, you know, they can't concede that it's over. It's done. So I mean, let me break this down to you here. Not only are the Lakers toast, they're the butter that goes on the toast. They're the orange juice. There's the grits that goes with the butter. Please. They better be careful. They, they better be careful. They're going to be the George McGoverns of the NBA. <laughs> she does call me. She do call me, and she do want to hook up, but I don't really have time for her. Is that so? Yes, sir. Because you're getting more ass than a toilet seat? Oh, man, call me toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so, so when you talk about TPing the entire neighborhood, it has a whole different <laughs> meaning. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So, uh, I've been married for two years now, and I've, I've been banging this chick for about six months, but one day I might decide to settle down and quit messing around and, you know, have a kid or get serious, you know, who knows. But in the meantime... I like this. Fun. He's a married guy who tells me one day I might settle down. I'm so tired of people in general, especially women, carrying this notion on that men are worthless, that they don't need us, but yet they have absolutely no problem getting us to sign the dotted line so that eventually they can spread their legs for somebody else and take half of our income and stay in our house that we bought to pay for their dream of having kids and having a family that they constantly nag us about. And by the way, one thing that really pissed me off is that I heard Oprah Winfrey one time, actually several times on her show, say that the hardest job in the world is a stay-at-home mom and they don't get any respect. What about fathers that are chained to their desk and their miserable jobs to pay for that very dream of them staying home, to love their wife, to love their child. Why don't you go to the goddamn gym, stay in shape for your husband, and do your part, you goddamn bitch. A woman who's married to some to some guy uh, goes and has an affair with the teenage gardener. And is having sex. Now, if, if you're having sex with somebody like that without using birth control, why would you do that? What's well, his responsibility to use a con No, if you, it's your responsibility. First of all, if you're having sex with a minor, which is illegal, it's your responsibility at least to try to keep having babies. The person you're having sex with is an irresponsible minor. You need you need to get a life, guy. From a secret location in Hollywood, it's Flash Friday. I came for the beer and the bitches. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about it's a different kind of radio talk program we're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacker or a convicted felon no i am your host right down our telephone number you're gonna need it it's 1-800-5-800-TOM 866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio on this Flash Friday. Headlights on across North America. 
Ed Lang, time to show your loyalty to the Tom Likas show. And ladies, we flash you, you flash us. If you see a guy with the headlights on, show us your knockers. Let us see. It's that simple. Wide open telephones on the Tom Likas show. Anything goes here, anything at all. We can talk about anything that's on your mind. Anything we discussed on the air this week, anything you think we should have talked about, you can call up, yell, scream, complain, jump up and down. It's all fair game as long as you're absolutely fascinating. If you're not, we kick your ass the hell off the telephone. You just call us here at 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Did I just hear that Japan had a 7.0 earthquake? I think I did. Wow. Well, well, well. First China, now Japan. Eek. Let's go to your calls here. It's Steve on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. I'm calling uh, because one of my coworkers at work got pregnant about two months ago. And now I have to do extra work at work, and I had to got pulled aside from my supervisor today because I would, wasn't compliant. And uh, just wondering what you uh, what you, what you would say about this sort of thing. Um, my opinion is that uh, your job is your job. Your job is not making up for other people's work. Right. And but they were- uh, you know, if the other person is getting equal pay to you, then uh, they should be doing equal work to you. Right. I, I completely agree. But, or you, uh, you should know. get paid more and they should get paid less. <laughs> I completely agree, but unfortunately they don't see it that way. <laughs> well, you always have the option of going to another job. Right. Right when they need you the most. Right. Which would be about uh, in about a month. <laughs> oh, what, you're leaving? Uh, no, just they, they get busy uh, in about a month or two. Oh. Well, you'd have an awful lot of, uh, you know, you see how much juice you have if you get another job offer. Yeah. And you tell them that you're taking it, and you tell them the reason you're taking it is because you are opposed to the idea of doing someone else's work. Right. Who gets paid the same as you do. Yeah, unfortunately, it's uh, one of those type of jobs where it's uh, take it or leave it. <laughs> they wouldn't they wouldn't cry much over me leaving. All right, then, but you know what? If you really do resent it, go somewhere else. Yeah. I mean, I I would. Do you think you could do that or would do that? Uh, well, I love my job very much. Uh, uh, <laughs> it's uh, quite entertaining. And uh, what I do you do? Uh, I work in a in a basketball arena. You work in a basketball? Is it one we've heard of? Yes, it's uh, Staples. Really? Yeah. Well, isn't that interesting? Well, if you work at Staples, that means you're a member of a union. Yeah, but uh, I don't know. The union doesn't really help you out on that sort of thing. Have you tried? Uh, not really. I would if I were you. Yeah. I'd file a grievance about that. Yeah, I, I guess I could, but uh, I don't know. I I don't think that uh, there would be any you know anything that would uh, you know. Well, you don't know till you try. You are paying union dues. Right. So the very least, you should give it a shot. Right. Don't not try. Right. Okay. Well, thanks so much, Tom. Good luck. Thanks for the call. I hate when that happens. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Joe on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. It's an honor to talk to you. I know. (laughs) Hey, I'm uh, calling in because sometimes I'm listening to your show, and you guys got some... uh, some callers that aren't exactly the uh, smartest guys on the planet, and you're giving good advice to them. But just the other day, I couldn't get through, and you guys talked a show about uh, how dads um, are spoken about by by mothers and um, spoken in such a way that uh, creates a wedge between the son and the mother and the uh, son. And my mom played against my dad, uh, making him the boogeyman, making him the enforcer of the family. And I always, you know, thought that he was kind of a jerk. And 
so I, I grew up and uh, kind of went my separate ways with my dad. And uh, a girlfriend of mine, her dad died in her arms from cancer. And uh, so I ended up writing a letter um, to my dad. And essentially, I, I wrote to him saying, you know, I forgive you for all of these things that you did to me, which none of them were true. Didn't know this. And, you know, my dad pulled me aside one day and said, you know, it's tough being a dad and, you know, hear all the truths and just totally laid it on the line. And it was such a good show to listen to the other day. I was, I was so amazed at how many good callers called in not talking about getting their girlfriends pregnant and actually, you know, contributing very, very good advice. And the fact that it's uh, Father's Day coming up, I just kind of wanted to let everybody else know that uh, there's some certain good dads out there that uh, don't always appear to be good dads. Um, we just kind of need to listen to them and put them aside and, uh, you know, do the right thing. There are some dads out there who tried to be good dads, uh, were forbidden from being good dads or prevented from being good dads. Uh, then uh, the the kids were told uh, what jerks, what a holes their fathers were. And uh, don't take your mother's word on that kind of thing. Just don't. At least find out for yourself. And my mom's a good lady, but still, there is so much misinformation that you know. My dad was just a normal guy bought me, you know, my first 12 packs of condoms and sat me down and said, you know, you're going to go out and have sex, have fun, make it have fun. But there was always this, you know, side note of my mom, you know, the, the puritanical, uh, you know, misinformation coming through. And, you know, my, I was shocked when I finally sat down with my dad, you know, 15 years after, you know, growing up and kind of giving up on him uh, to find out this information, how what a great a guy he was. So what a tragedy that is. Well, I had one question for you. What was the time that you were married that you finally snapped and came to the realization of the advice you're giving now? Because you were married several times before. What was the time that you finally went, wait a second? It was the last time. It was the last time. The last time I was married. Because, really, why would I keep getting married if I knew what I know now? Exactly. But, I mean, what what was it? Was it? You know, she was manipulating you beyond the normal... I, in the last time I had to... Uh, put it this way. One thing I'm tired of with American women is a sense of entitlement. Mm -hmm. You know, they just see you as a sperm donor and a human wallet. And I am tired of not being appreciated for what I do. You know, all too many women, and Chris Rock talks about this uh, in his act, but I've been talking about it for years. All too many women just expect the light bill to be paid. They just expect the gas bill to be paid. They expect the cable bill to be paid. They uh -huh. expect the cell phone bill to be paid. They expect, uh, they expect you to pay the mortgage or the rent. They expect you to pay uh, uh, for clothing and, and food. And when you do it, there's no appreciation. There's Father's Day uh, cards telling you what a drunk you are, and you hog the remote, and you smell bad. There's no appreciation for what men do. And um, uh, my attitude about it is, about it is like, uh, all right, ladies, F you. I am not going to take you into my home and pay for your every need and then be treated like crap. Very wise, Tom, as always. Can you blow me out Jesus style? Yes, I certainly can. Tom Like this. 1-800-5800-TOM Hey, guess what? I lost my virginity today, Tom. I got flashed. Tell me the story. Okay, I was heading north on the five freeway and some women flashed me. And as they passed me up, I saw the secret Biola. Biola's Bible Institute of Los Angeles. <laughs> this is college shit. And they have big boobs, too. It's Flash Friday on the Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show. 
Flash Friday. Thank you for tuning in. Let's say hello here to Sarah. Wide open telephones on the Tom Like Show. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Tom. Um, well, first of all, I am a longtime listener, and um, I absolutely love your show. And I agree with, uh, with mainly everything you have to say about relationships and men. But I was listening on, I believe it was yesterday, and you were giving a guy advice about how to get chicks' numbers or how to get laid, and you advised him that if he changed his area code, I believe the guy was in Rancho or something, he lived, and you stated... Rancho, was it Rancho Cucamonga? Yeah, Yeah. I believe so, and you stated that if he changed his area code to a 310, he would probably pick up more chicks, and my only thing with that is, well, first of all, living in Los Angeles, a 310 area code covers a wide range. I mean, a 310 could be Linwood, it could be Carson, or... It doesn't have to be Bel Air, Beverly Hills, or or West. No, no, that's absolutely true. But the thing is, nine oh nine. Let's be honest. Which upscale communities are covered by nine oh nine? That's true. And then, so that's I mean, one of the area codes you don't want to tell chicks you have. Yeah, but me being a chick that visited that visits some of the establishments that you are mentioning to guys. I mean, I hang out at the high-end bars like the Four Seasons, uh, Maestro's, the Palm. I mean, I hang out at those establishments. And honestly, if I am talking with a guy, it doesn't matter to me in terms of if he says 310, that doesn't put me in the mind that he lives in Beverly Hills or Westwood. No, or like but, it, but here's the thing. It, it, yeah, if a guy told you, here's my number, 909, you would dismiss that guy. You would never, ever call him, ever. Probably so, but I don't think... That's were... why I told him to use 310. I'm not saying 310 guarantees that you'll get lucky. I'm saying 909 guarantees you won't. Right. And um, once again, like I said, I absolutely love you. I think you are uh, just, you're right on all the time. And I, I, actually, I was telling a male friend of mine, I was basically schooling him on like his one-on-one, but I wasn't telling him that I listened to like us and after we got through talking he said well you should be an advocate for men because he was referring about this old girlfriend that he had and blah 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 and I go why are you still with her I, you know I go why are you paying her sale bill I mean I basically just gave him the rundown and he was really impressed he said wow you should be an advocate for me I said well I mean there's no benefit with you, and then he goes, well, what if you're in love? I go, that has nothing to do with it. What can you do with a female that you can do if you are not married? And he was just astounded, so of course he wanted my phone number and all of that. But I told him, I said, there's no benefit in a man getting married, ever. I said, it's no benefit. I said, think about it, especially if you live in California, there is no benefit. So he was just astounded, and men are, and they're like, wow. You know, you actually gave me something to think about. Them not knowing that I am a like is one on one listener, and I'm thinking, you know, what, you know what you're saying is right. And sometimes women don't agree with it, but I mean, basically everything that you're saying makes a hundred percent is right on. It makes sense. I love that, sir. Yeah, it, yes, it really does. And I just want you to keep saying, you know, to keep doing what you're doing. And the women who don't agree with you are generally the fat and fugly women, not to put That's anybody right. out on blast, but they are. Because what you stand does not offend hot chicks. It just doesn't, because they know what you're saying is true. That's exactly right, Sarah. Hot chicks are not offended by Like Us 101. They're not offended by me. Exactly. But, I mean, you are very intelligent and i think you're very well informed about everything i mean i'm thinking god is there nothing is there anything that that tom does not know but you're well informed and i think that what you're telling men is to help them and if you're smart you will listen and if you happen to get married at least you would have obtained and gotten a um good profession and career and you would be in the position to make those decisions but when you are not doing that then you end up in a loser and you end up with like i use the 
uh, analogy that you gave about the car. You know, you afford uh, Honda because that's what you can afford. But if you can upgrade, then you'll upgrade. So I just love you to death, though. I think you're right on. Thank you for that, Sarah. I appreciate the call. A chick who's into 101. Look at that. Love it. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. This is David on the Tom Likas Show. Flash Friday. Hello. Tom Likas. Yes. Up, my friend? I'm doing okay. How about you? I'm doing great. Happy Friday to you. And to you. <laughs> Thanks. Um, short-time listener, first-time caller. I have this proposition that was presented to me recently, um, and I think you're the perfect man to ask. Um, basically, this girl from Mexico uh, offered me ten thousand dollars to marry her card, and um, I wanted your input on that. Um, you've never heard us talk about this before, have you? I have not. All right. First of all, what is being proposed is illegal. Okay. You understand you'd be violating federal law. I understand, but how, how are they going to know? Well, there's any number of ways to find out. Okay. Let's say you decided that uh, you didn't like being married to her. Let's say you wanted to marry somebody else, like a real marriage. Okay. And you tell her you're getting a divorce. Okay. She might tell the authorities what you did. But she's going to go in the in the slammer, too. So she would never do that. Here's what she could say. Oh, I love him. I had no idea. <laughs> yeah. But how, how are they going to trace it? If That's number go? one. Number two. Okay. Are you aware of any of the things you have to do ever since 9-11 now in order to get somebody into the country? Are you aware of the paperwork you have to fill out, the things you're going to have to sign? I'm not. Are you aware, for example, that you will sign a document that says that she can't go on welfare or any form of public assistance for the first 10 years she lives here? Okay, I'm not aware of that. And if she's too poor, can't get a job, doesn't speak good enough English, whatever, has a baby out of wedlock, if she hasn't done it already, and yeah. she needs money, and she goes to the welfare department, she can't get money. But she will get money. Do you know who she'll get it from? From moi? from you up to $16,000 a year. Even if I divorce her right away? That's correct. Wow. Because it has nothing to do with being married to her. It's like co-signing a loan. You are saying that when she comes into the country, she will not apply for public assistance. Okay. And you're guaranteeing that she won't get public assistance by promising to pay money if she is in need. I didn't know that. Even well, if I'll bet you didn't. Damn. That's right. Are you also aware that you'll have to go through several INS interviews? I'm aware of that. I knew that. Right. I knew and you're going to have to lie to the uh, uh, to the uh, uh, examiner every time? Well, they can't shake me. I mean, I, I know. Really? I was, was so when they, call, when they call you into a separate room and they say, what kind of color panties does she wear? Uh, well, you... I actually already know. I've, I've been intimate with her. I've been, you know, uh, we've been just dating casually and for... Six months, so and there's record of it. I mean, all, um, our neighbors have seen us, and uh, it, it certainly appears that. But we, you don't live there. She does not live with me, but right. I mean, we see each other often. That's not the point. Uh, you, you know, some of the things they're going to ask for. What are the, some of the things they're going to want to see? The electric bills with both your names on them. Gas bills, both your names on them. A lease with both your names on it. They're going to ask for pictures of your vacations together. What if you tell them this? What if you tell them, well, she won't sleep with me. She won't live with me in the same house. And we're married, which is understandable. I mean, they could conceive that, I guess. Well, they might very well throw her out of the country, say this is not a real marriage. Really? Of course. Huh. Wow. I'm surprised by that. Why are you surprised? Well, I mean, there's a lot of women, especially from other countries, especially land countries, that they won't have sex until they get married. You know, there's a lot of them. I mean, in Mexico and Guatemala, yeah, what of Salvador, it? all the way down. What of it? What of it? Well, I mean, you can just tell the INS, well, how are we going to have a bill with our names on it? We don't live together. You, 
but you're getting true. married. You understand? Yeah. Uh, you are going to. They're not going to look at the application unless she's married to an American. Yeah. Oh, you're talking about right you, after we get married, they want to see the bills together. Right. Oh, okay, all right. That's... Are you going to be able to prove in any number of... And by the way, you never know which thing they're going to ask for. Oh. They don't give you a list in advance. You go in and they say, got an electric bill? <laughs> <laughs> got, uh, let me see a copy of your lease. Do you rent or own? Oh, okay. You own the house? Is her name on the deed? Let me see that. Oh. Oh. I wasn't, I didn't think it was that, that, that. It has been that. ever since 9-11, do you understand? They're trying to keep terrorists out of the country. Yeah, they, they're trying to keep all kinds of other people out well, of the country. Well, they, they weren't trying as hard before 9-11. Yeah, yeah. 9-11 is when they, it got like this. Wow. So you, you... I'm sure you've had this topic before, right, Tom? I'm saying absolutely no. And and on top of that, when you marry somebody, uh-huh. uh, you become financially responsible for them. Now, you're talking about a girl who, does she speak English? Yeah, she does. She speaks English. Does she have a job? Yes, she does. What does she do? She works at retail. So she makes $8 an hour. No, no, she makes, she's actually, she's doing quite well. She makes. How much is well. quite well? Um, she makes twenty dollars an hour. I mean, I don't know. So she makes. She works forty hours a week. Yeah, she's a manager. Right. Okay. She's a manager. And boy, I wonder what kind of store doesn't ask for your social security number. Oh wait, she has a fake one. That's right. She, she does. She has a fake one. Right. Uh, okay. Well, uh, but understand that uh, she could quit that job at any time. She can. And then, guess who's going to have to pay her expenses? You. And then when you marry her, some judge could say, well, you've been like a father to the kids. Yeah, so therefore, yeah, even e yeah, even though you are not uh, the father of the children, the, the children have uh, come to see you as their father. Therefore, you're on the hook for child support anyway. Damn. <laughs> it's a lot more intricate than it is. Of course it is. It <laughs> of course it is. Were you born in this country? Yes. Okay. So you've never been through this. Never. I've never got married. All right. But uh, I'm not just talking about getting married. I'm talking about going through the INS. Uh, no, yeah. never. I I've done INS procedures for my grandmother, and it, it was not that bad. It was pretty easy, but that was before. That's because she was that. your grandmother. You weren't married to her, and you didn't have to yeah. prove she was your grandmother. And it was before 9-11. Right. So I might add. So I'm oh. telling you, you're taking a big risk. The financial risk you're taking is a lot larger than the $10,000 she's offering to pay you. Yeah. That, mm. And she supports two children on that she money? Did. Well, she, her family's going to fork out a lot of the money. Um, Where's and, her family getting money? Her, fa her family was actually not that bad. I mean, they came over here uh, legally through visas and they, uh, through work visas. They had their own businesses in Mexico and then... Uh, she came over here uh, legally at first, but then she extended her visa, and she just has never taken care of it. So she, she actually now she is illegally now, but uh, she did initially enter the country legally. It was not illegal. Right. She had a six-month visa, but she, what she was not legal to do was work. Yeah, and when she, what she's doing is she's using some girl that has that Social Security number, and she's just letting her use it. And it, that's how, how she's... And that person doing. is stupid, too. Did she pay her, too? Probably. That's stupid. Yeah. I know it's stupid. I, um, but I think now that I'm talking to you, I think it's stupid doing it. I, I'm sure you've talked about it. What have the people who have done it have said in the How past? desperate are you to get laid? You're not in love with this girl. I'm not in love with her. I, I, so I how desperate are you to get laid? You can't find chicks? No, no, no. I've, I've been banging her, Tom. No, no, but time. the point is, now there's no free lunch. Now she wants you to marry her. I'm not going to I'm not gonna keep her. She's not my She's not my girlfriend, Tom. That's I'm not the point. Made, well, can't you just say no? Paid. Do you really need $10,000 that badly? I didn't. I, that's why I was calling you to see, if, you know, because I'm sure people have called in that I've done this. I'm just, I'll just kidding. I've, We've I've, talked about this many times. I, I have never heard this topic. I, I, I just didn't you read the me. story of recently about the woman on Craigslist? She was Russian. Uh huh. And she advertised for somebody to marry her. 
Yeah. And and, and a guy did it. Uh -huh. And these morons didn't realize that the federal government probably reads Craigslist, and in this case, they did. They might listen to the Tom Likas show, too. That's right. <laughs> so my recommendation to you is, why do you need this in your life? Why? Well, I was thinking just do it, and within a year's time, it'll be over, and I'll get the 10 grand. It's, it's, it's not over in a year. It, it okay. takes a minimum of two years to get this done. Oh. And that's after several interviews. And the, how was your trip to Mexico? Let's see the photos. How was your trip to Hawaii? Let's see the pictures. Gotcha. I didn't think it was this intricate, Tom. I, I Let me see aware. you and her and the two kids. Let's see the family. <laughs> Let's see you holding the three kids and two. All that. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. Well, and why are you boffing a single mother? I'm banging her because she's hot. And yeah, but I don't I always tell you what happens when you do that? Well, I I'm, I'm I can't have babies, so um I can't have kids with her, so um is that what you're worried about me having kids? Well, I'm worried about that. Yes. Well, I, I'm I'm sterile, so Does she know that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, um that. bad 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 idea. Bad. Even if she, if I'm sterile, it's still bad dating a single mom. Well, for any number of reasons. And, and now she's asking you to marry her to help her get into the country, and you're thinking about it. Well, hell yeah. I mean, ten grand's a lot. I don't make a whole lot of money. So. Yeah, but, but you realize how much risk you're taking to get ten grand. Now I do. Before, before I placed this call, I, I was not aware of all this stuff. Now I'm fully aware. You've made me fully aware. Here, I'm going to offer you ten grand. Right? Here's, here's, gonna... here's what I want you to do. Okay. I want you to go to the top of the Empire State Building with a bungee cord. <laughs> and I, I want you not. to hang off the side, and the wind has to be at least 50 miles an hour. No, I I'm going to give you that. 10. Why not? Because it's, cause I, don't, I, I value my life too much. I'm not going to... What's the big that. deal? You, I, I'm giving you 10 grand. No, that's different, Tom. This How's is it different? different? Because it's talking about my life. My life. We're is talking deep. about your life, you moron. <laughs> I, um, I don't really appreciate being called a moron. I mean, it was just a well. I, I wouldn't you. do it if you if you if you were a moron. I mean, this is your life. The it risk life. the risk of going to federal prison, the risk of having to pay for ten years sixteen thousand dollars a year. Yeah. The risk of 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 uh, getting caught. Yeah. Never being able to work again. Being a convicted felon. Right. You don't think you're risking your life there? No, my like. like How about the time yeah, you spend in prison? Risking, when when my... when when you get into the prison cell and you meet Bubba, do you think your life might be in danger then? When I'm, I'm part of me, when I meet who? When you meet the big guy who uh, wants you to bend over in the prison cell. Ah, oh, Bubba, Bubba, to hell with Bubba! I ain't worried about no. Oh, Bubba. you're not. Gonna, so if you went to prison, wow, well, just imagine, your life is at stake here. Yeah, I'm not going to go to prison because I'm not going to do it. I, that's that's the whole point I was calling, just to ask you the question. Night. And, and you know, you don't have to get all crazy on me and Dude. call me a moron and all this. Dude, I'm you're being crazy. a moron because you're telling me that this is not your life. Hanging off the Empire State Building will be your life. Uh, but running the risk of going to federal prison, having to pay $16,000 a year for 10 years, uh, you don't think that's your life? It is my life. I mean, but I, what I was referring to is life and death situation. I mean, my yeah, my my life might be screwed financially, but uh, you know, I would. But you'd be worth the risk to get ten thousand dollars. How about no, you just work another job? Be, it would not be worth the risk. And I'm How about you get a better job? What do you do for a living? I don't really want to say. You know, um, I'll bet you don't. Hang on, uh, John. What did you want to say to Dave? Uh, yeah, Dave, you, you, Tom is right. You're a complete moron. First of all, you're getting that ten thousand dollars from the family. You ever heard of the term aiding and abetting? You're aiding and abetting and harboring an illegal alien. Okay. Uh, so not what? only are you committing marriage fraud, which carries a, a, a term, but you're also harboring an illegal alien, and you have knowledge, so you get to jail for that. And now he's gone on public ready and told all that stuff, and you think this is the first time we've ever heard these stories? No, it's not the first time, but I don't care because I'm not going to do it, dude. So, what? You don't got to. Yeah, I feel like you were. I was going to get $10,000 and all this other stuff. That's, it's just, 
I, I love it, Tom. I hear all these people call in and talk about marrying immigrants and things of this sort for money and things like that, and they just don't realize. Do I have it I right about? Them. Do I have it right about what the INS now is doing with people who try to get married? Yes, you do. As a matter of fact, it's no longer INS. It's actually Citizenship and Immigration Services, and then the people are going to put you in jail. They let everybody in. We kick everybody out. It's Immigration and Customs Enforcement. <laughs> and when you go down to that office, I think it's on Temple Street, downtown Los Angeles. You go into an office, a windowed office, you sit down with an examiner, and that person starts asking all kinds of questions, and you don't know what questions they're going to ask. There's about 10 million questions we can ask, and uh, you, you, trust me, even the best think they can get by with it, and it never works, ever. They get Are, caught. They may get out of one examiner's thing, but they'll come back to bite them. It will. Don't you sometimes? You don't you sometimes? Don't you sometimes split people off into separate rooms with separate examiners and ask them the same questions? You do that. Yes, you do. You do that. There's also other things. Even after, let's say you you managed to buffalo the examiner at that time, then you get out in the street, and then all of a sudden she decides you get drunk, get pissed off one night, you go and hit her. Now not only have you had that, now you've got. She calls in and says that you've brought her in here and trafficked her in here for servitude, sexual servitude, because, hey, she's hot. And lots of people are doing that now. Lots Absolutely. of people are lots of people are, are getting uh, married and then getting out of it by saying there was domestic violence, even when there wasn't. Isn't that right, John? Yeah, absolutely. It happens all the time. Just uh, <laughs> Just point your finger to the to city street, and I guarantee you, you pick three of them off of there easily. Oh, I guarantee it. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. You'll be glad to know when I did the DTB email I got from my girl said, and if I hear the name Tom Likas one more time, I'm going to throw up. <laughs> it's the Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show from Hollywood. It's one 800 tom Here's traveling on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, what's going on, Tom? Not much. As I want to call and give you some good news, I was actually leaving work, heading on Santa Anita, going to the 10, and I saw a red Acura, and I kind of thought, you know, nothing of it. Car honked at me, and there was an Asian chick, and she flashed me. The puppies were okay. They were a handful. The funny part is the passenger flipped me off, and I'm kind of confused because on the rearview mirror, it had like a rainbow-colored lay, those <laughs> necklaces you get from Hawaii. Yes. Either way, I, I just I saw that, and I was like, thank God for Tom, the man, the myth, the legend. I love that. So, Tom, keep doing what you're doing, and uh, guys like that last guy who wants to marry and throw his life away and think nothing of it, they're never going to get the clue, brother. That's exactly right. Top for president. <laughs> Have a good one. All right, you do, Trevor. Let's see you later. Another Flash Friday success story. Headlights on, man, ladies. Show us your knockers. 1-800-5800-TOM. Here's Sandy on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. What's up? Not much, Sandy. Well, I just wanted to get your thoughts about the um, R. Kelly trial. And what do you think about the verdict? Well, um, <laughs> it's interesting. Everybody thought R. Kelly was going down. And yep, I was one of those people. I sure enough thought he was out of there because I saw the video. So I'm like, dang, he's done for. Well, he hired good attorneys, and it all came down to whether he has a mole on his back or not. If you, did you read the testimony? That's what it's all about. That's crazy. The guy in the video did not have a mole, and R. Kelly has a mole on his back. Wow. That's what it came down to. That and some uh, uh, witness who was a self-proclaimed video expert who came in and showed, he tried to demonstrate that R. Kelly could have been, uh, you know, like photoshopped into the video. That's crazy because I just went to the beach and I, after the beach, I got I got a mysterious mole like right here on like behind like lower, like my lower part of my neck. So I don't understand like. I so you think maybe you think Gar Kelly went to the tanning salon for a while and had them turn up the UV rays? I don't know what he did, but I think that was like a weak. That's a weak case. That was very weak, and it should have been open and shut, especially if you have video footage of this man peeing on people and 
underage, you know, girls, and you have testimony. I can't. I know exactly what you mean, Sandy. But he's free, for God's sake. The Tom Likas Show.